Hello everyone, in this video we are going to solve problem number 46 from the chapter of stress transformation in the book of Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibbler. In this problem we are being asked to solve problem number 6 using Mohr circle. So this is problem number 6. In problem number 6, this is the current state of stress and it is being asked to determine the stress components acting on inclined plane AB. So let's solve this problem. So before solving this problem using Mohr circle, we should be knowing the two points so that we can draw the Mohr circle. And those two points are being determined taking two faces of this element. Those two faces could be these two or it could be these two. It's up to us and both would be equal because this element is in equilibrium. Since we are being asked to determine the stress component on plane AB, so we better take this plane so that we can shift that plane by an angle of 60 degree clockwise. So at this plane, we can see there is no normal stress is there. It means zero normal component. But here a stress of 350 MPa is being applied and that is anti-clockwise. And usually we take anti-clockwise as negative. So negative 350. This is the one point that we have on this face. And now for the other point on this face or on this face, we can see there is a compressive normal stress is acting and compressive is usually taken negative. And in order to have the balance, we will be having same shear stress of 350, but clockwise and positive. So positive 350. Now we got the two points. One is because of the state of stress at this phase and another is because of state of stress at this phase. Now we can move forward for the drawing of the Mohr circle. Let's have normal and shear stress coordinate system. Vertical is usually shear, horizontal is normal. And in order to have better understanding, let's draw the grid. And after having grid, let's draw this point, let's say minus 500 and 350. So minus 500, it means we will be moving on the left side of the normal stress. Before moving further, we should define the scale in terms of stress. So one unit of this grid would be equal to 100 MPa. So we have 500, it means five units we would be moving leftward. So 1.2, 3, 4, and 5 since 350 is positive so we will be moving upward by 3.5 units 1 unit 2 3 and 3.5 so this is the point for this phase now for the second phase we can see that we have zero normal stress it means at the origin but we have shear stress of negative 350 so we will be moving downward by the units of 3.5 so one unit two three and 3.5 so this is the point for the second phase once we have both the points then joining these two points we will be having the diameter of the Mohr circle and once we will have the diameter then we can draw the Mohr circle so this is the Mohr circle that we have got moving further we should be knowing some basics in Mohr circle let's start with uh, the location of the center of Mohr circle this distance I am talking about so this distance can be calculated by taking the average of the normal stresses. So minus 500 and 0 will have average of minus 250 MP. We can have the radius of the Mohr circle. This distance from origin up to this point is 350 negative. So using this right angle triangle, we can have the radius of this more circle as using the Pythagoras theorem so we will have square of perpendicular and a square of base so on doing calculations we will be having radius as 430.12 MPa as the radius now let's move on what we want to determine we want to determine the stress component acting on an inclined plane AB. So for that we need to rotate this phase by an angle of 60 degree clockwise. So this phase is being 
represented by this line on Mohr circle and if this is 60 degree on actual so on Mohr circle it will be 120 then so let's have an uh, angle of 120 degree because this is moving clockwise so this should also be moving clockwise instead of anti-clockwise so then we will have a point of required normal and shear stress so these are actually the one which will be calculated that is actually required so once we have radius it means this distance will also be same but we need to determine this angle so that we can have the normal stress and also the shear stress so before having this angle we should be knowing this amount of angle so this can be calculated using this right angle triangle where we have each of the side we have hypotenuse we have base we have perpendicular using any trigonometric ratio we can calculate this angle let's use 10 theta formula to calculate this angle so then perpendicular is 350 base is 250 I'm not writing the negative sign because that has nothing to do with the calculation of the angle so from here we will have uh, angle theta and uh, on the calculations it will be 54.46 degrees so once we have this angle then this angle can easily be calculated because this total angle is 180 so let's say this is required and let's represent that uh, with x degree so adding all these 120 plus 54.46 degree because all those would be equal to 180 degree from here we will have x degree and on doing calculations we will be having the angle as 5.54 degree as this angle now we can determine the normal and shear stress at this plane using this simple right angle triangle where the angle is now known, radius is known. So we can have then the base and perpendicular. Let's have base first. This distance I'm talking about, the distance from here up to the center. So we have uh, angle, we have hypotenuse we want to require. We want to calculate base using cos 5.4 degree equal to base and that is required over hypotenuse which is radius and that is 430.12 so from here we will have that required stress and that is 428 mp so if we want to know this uh, normal stress so this will be then equal to minus 250 plus this minus 428 so then we will be having the normal stress at the required plane so minus 250 and minus 428 when adding them together we will be having normal stress of 6 7 8 mpa how about shear if we can calculate shear by knowing this amount of distance on the mover circle which will be actually the shear stress acting on a b plane since this is perpendicular so then we will be using sine theta so sine 5.54 degrees equal to perpendicular which is actually shear stress at the required plane divide by the radius which is 430.12 so from here we will be having shear stress as 41.5 mpa so at this plane the ab plane we have state of stress as compressive 678 mpa normal stress 41.5 mpa as the shear stress so this will be the answer then so keep in mind i am taking clockwise as positive shear stress so we have got negative value of 41.5 because this is downward it means the anti-clockwise shear stress would be acting on a b plane it's up to you whether you take clockwise as positive or anti-clockwise as positive it's up to you i usually take anti-clockwise as negative and clockwise as positive so if i get the value as negative 41.5 mpa it means anti-clockwise shear stress is acting on a b plane so this is all from this video where we have learned how we can calculate the state of stress at any other plane which is actually required plane if we have been given with the state of stress at a one element so this is all from this video thank you for watching this video